Hi, welcome back. In the first part, we started to look at custom symbols and in particular at the data import type symbol. In this part, we now start to look at the second type, which is the calculated or synthetic version. So let's take an in-depth look at this now. Now for this type of custom symbol, no data import is required at all. Instead, the price data is generated automatically based on one or more existing instruments that are provided by your broker. And you can also use mathematical calculations to transform that data before the final quote is calculated. And when you create a symbol in this way, the ticks are generated real time by MetaTrader so that the chart changes as new quotes come in from those underlying symbols. Additionally, the historical past data is also calculated for the M1 bars. Now, when custom symbols of this type are shown in the market watch window, MT5 will automatically add all of the component symbols that are used to calculate this into the market watch for you automatically if they're not there already. And if you're interested in these mathematical functions that I mentioned a moment ago, then you can find out more information about these at this URL. So let's look now at why you would create this kind of custom symbol. The first reason is because it allows you to create what are effectively your own stock indices. So as an example, just like the Dow Jones Industrial Average has 30 US companies as its individual components, you can create your own custom index that's relevant to you and gives you the information you need to make your trading decisions. Another reason is that there might be alternative indices. So for example, the dollar index that you want to use, again, to help inform your trading. And when you create these, remember, they can both be displayed on a chart with indicators if you're a discretionary trader, but also they can be coded within your expert advisor to automatically use these values in order to decide when to trade. Another reason is that you can use proprietary synthetic symbols in this way to simplify the evaluation of your strategy's rules. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have a trading system that looks at the relative strength of two individual symbols and then makes trading decisions depending on how that strength is changing between the two. Well, what you could do with a custom symbol is create a symbol that's the ratio of those two underlying symbols. And then when the price of that custom symbol is rising, you know that the first symbol is strengthening compared to the second. And when the price is falling, vice versa, the second will be strengthening compared to the first. But they're just a few examples of how you can use this type of custom symbol. I'm sure that you can think of others. And in a moment, I'll show you how to create both of these last two examples in MT5. First, let's just look at where you can use this type of calculated symbol. Firstly, as I showed before, you can create charts, but the difference here to the data import option is that the charts do update automatically when they're of this calculated type. Also, just like the data import type, we can also use these calculated symbols within the strategy tester in order to backtest our expert advisor. Thirdly, these types of custom symbols can be used in live trading and used in your expert advisors. So this is a major advantage of this type of symbol above and beyond the data import option. So let's use an example and consider that you've created a custom symbol for the dollar index. The value of that and the indicators from that symbol can be used to inform your trading in your live environment from your EA. But of course, you won't actually be able to trade that dollar index if your broker doesn't have that as a supported symbol. But that information, of course, might be very valuable to you if you're trading any other dollar-related forex pair, such as Euro-Dollar or Dollar-Cad. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. 
So first off, we're going to create a calculated custom symbol for the dollar index. So again, we open the symbol manager, click on create custom symbol. Now the metadata here is already set for euro dollar, so I'm going to leave it at that. But I'm going to rename this to dollar index. Now instead of importing data, as I said, we're simply going to enter a calculation. And we do that in this field here. So first, let's just take a look at the calculation for dollar index, which you can see here. And I already have that in the appropriate text format to enter into MetaTrader, and you can see that here. We just paste this into the calculated field and click OK. OK to close that, OK again. We can now see that in our MarketWatch window. And if we open up a chart, we can see that the history has been automatically generated for us. It's currently trading at just over 92. And so just to make sure that that's correct, we can compare that with an online quote and we can see that yes, it is currently trading at 92.3. So it really is as simple as that. Now, the second example I'm going to use is where we look at the relative strength of one symbol against another. So we create a new custom symbol. Now I'm going to copy the metadata here from the Dow Jones so that the trading hours and so on are all set for this custom symbol. But there's a couple of things I'm going to override. So that's the number of digits that I'm going to set to five, because remember, we're looking at a ratio here, which is calculated from the Dow and the S&P. So whereas the WS30 symbol doesn't have any decimal places, we must ensure that we have them for our custom symbol. And also for the tick size, I'm going to set this to 0 0.00001 so that that appears correctly. I'm now going to give this a name, which is SPX 500 WS30 RS for relative strength. All we need to do now is put in the calculation. So you just need to make sure that you're using the correct naming convention for the symbols that your broker uses. And so for DarwinX, the S&P has the symbol SPX500, and we're going to divide that by the Dow, which is WS30. Click OK and come out. We can now see that appears in the market watch with live price quotes coming through. So if we open the chart for this now, because we're looking at relative strength, if the custom symbol price is rising, it means that the S&P is gaining strength more than the Dow Jones. And when the price is falling, it means the Dow Jones is gaining strength more than the S&P. So as I said before, this is just an example and I'm sure you can come up with your own ideas for custom symbols that will be relevant to you. Okay, so hopefully all of that made sense. I just want to cover a couple of points now in terms of gotchas that you need to be careful of before we finish off for the day. The first point is to make sure that you set the symbol specification, so the metadata associated to the symbol, before you import any data. There are certain data items in that specification list that if you change them after the data has been imported, your data will get deleted. So when you create the custom symbol, the first thing you want to do is to copy the data from an existing symbol, make any changes you need to, and then and only then import your data. Secondly, make sure that you don't use the same name for a custom symbol as used by your broker. Even though custom symbols are stored in a different path 
in the symbol manager, so they're all stored within the custom folder, this will still result in your custom symbol being deleted if it has the same name as a broker symbol. Next, if you're creating a custom symbol that represents a symbol that your broker has, so let's say you're creating a euro dollar custom symbol. In terms of the naming convention of that, always start the name with euro dollar or whatever your broker calls that symbol. And this is just general advice from MetaQuotes so that if you backtest using that symbol, the margin calculations, the profit calculations and so on will generally be more accurate because they will take the up-to-date versions from your broker's symbol. And the final point here is that you will not be able to use the MQL5 cloud network with a custom symbol. Okay, so that brings us pretty much to the end of this episode. I hope you've got some value from that. But before you head off, please do remember to give me a thumbs up and also to share a link to this video on your social media feeds and also any forums that you engage with. Furthermore, remember that this episode was put together because of a request from a previous video. And so if you have any requests, please do put them in the comments section right below. That's it for now. Thanks for your time. I'll see you next time and trade safe.